Hello my friend, it's time for Godcast. 1 Timothy chapter 2 is what we're going to be reading. And let's go to the Lord before we do anything else. This is your time, holy God. Father in heaven. King of kings, Lord of lords, Yeshua. Christ Jesus Almighty. We pray in your name to help us to really fully understand what you want us to know about you and the Father and the Holy Spirit. We give this time to you and we thank you for it in your name again. Amen and amen. Okay, here we go. I have... Uh, lost my place in my Bible app. <laughs> Here we go. First of all, then, it's, uh, by the way, in case you're looking for a really great app, free application for your, for your device, um, I recommend Literal Word, as in like it's literally God's Word, L-I-T-E-R-A-L-W-O-R-D, Literal Word is the name of the app. It's free and when you get it on your phone, you'll have both the Old and the New Testament in the New American Standard Translation, which, from all my research and study, is the closest you can get to the original scrolls and tablets. And that's what I want. I don't want any flowery words. I want the, I don't want to be uh, something uh, some word to be changed because it might be offensive. Really, the word's very clear about what's going to happen to people who change the meaning of it. It's not going to be good for you if you do that. So why would I want a translation that has obviously done that? So Literal Word is the name of the app um, if you're looking for something on, for your device. First Timothy chapter 2. First of all then, I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator also between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying as a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. <clears throat> Therefore, I want the men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without wrath and dissension. Women, likewise, I want women to adorn themselves with proper clothes. Apologies. I want women to adorn themselves with proper clothing, modestly and discreetly, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly garments, but rather by means of good works, as is proper for women making a claim to godliness. A woman must quietly receive instruction with entire submissiveness. But I do not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man, but to remain quiet. For it was Adam who was first created and then Eve. It was not Adam who was deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. But women will be preserved through the bearing of children if they continue in faith and love and sanctity with self-restraint. 1 Timothy chapter 2. I can pretty much guarantee you, you're not going to hear your preacher speak on that chapter in the next sermon for the next 28 years. <laughs> so many pastors are so... I thank God I have a strong pastor where I, where I attend, my home church, who doesn't shy away from something because he's afraid that people might react and go, oh, I'm not coming back. How dare you read about that? read about it. He didn't write it. He just chose to believe it. It's God's holy word. If you're offended by that, you might want to pray about that and ask why. 
We need to have a repentant heart. We got to. Now more than ever. We need to confess our sins. We need to pray to the Lord to heal our land. He will be faithful, but we've got to make that act first. So thank you for joining me. I hope, uh, Lord willing, we'll be able to do it tomorrow. First Tim uh, Timothy chapter 3. Suddenly I'm hiccuping crazy. What the heck? <laughs> See you later.